Jeremiah chapter 28. And we're picking up about the yoke that we learned yesterday. That Jeremiah was told to take a wooden oak yoke and put it around his neck and go preach. Kind of funny. See this guy walking around with a yoke. And Jesus said, take my yoke. And it came to pass the same year. Chapter 27, verse 1. In the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month, so we're dating, that Hananiah, the son of Azar, the prophet, all right, which was of Gibeon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests, and all the people, saying, These priests and people are always present since two or three chapters. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years will I bring again on, into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house. Now this is Hananiah speaking. God already told us it's going to be 70 years. We already learned from our Bible reading and studying. Ezra brings them back. We learned last night they're more interested about the goods than they are the soul. We went and read how many people, just in the two captivities that Babylon came, how many people were taken and were worried about spoons and forks and bowls and whatever Nebuchadnezzar took. We're worried about the stuff. Within two years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house. What about all the people of the Lord? That the Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. So already we see that things are gone. People are gone. Vessels of the Lord are gone. Vessels of the king's house are gone. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah. Oh, now the people. Well, we finally get to the people, with, you know, the king that went into Babylon, saith the Lord, and I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Now that, thus saith the Lord, thus answered the Lord, verse 2 and 4, that's not God speaking, this is a lying prophet. And Jeremiah is going to tell us that. Hananiah is saying, the Lord's going to do this within two years. Well, let's see what Jeremiah has to say. Then the prophet Jeremiah, see, prophet. It said in verse 1, that Hananiah, the son of Azar, the prophet. This guy was a son of a prophet. He wasn't a prophet. I wonder what his father had to say. Was he a good prophet or was he a bad prophet? Said unto prophet Hananiah, false prophet, in the presence of the priests, priest, in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord. So he's still in the temple. He's still preaching at the gate of the temple. And the people are still there and the priests are still there. This guy gets up and says, this is what the Lord said, blah, 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 blah. And Jeremiah rebukes him before all the people. And calls him by name. If you did that in America today, they sue you. And they would win the lawsuit. You can't mention churches. You can't mention people's name without a lawsuit and lose your money. Even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. Amen. The Lord do so. Wait a minute. The Lord perform thy words which thou hast prophesied. Oh, wait a minute. What's Jeremiah saying? To bring again the vessels of the Lord's house, and all that is carried away captive from the Babylon, from Babylon unto this place. Jeremiah is saying, Amen to bringing the stuff and the people back, but not the two years. So Jeremiah is agreeing to two-thirds of the message. 
One third of the mass hits. No, not not the year. You realize Balaam, he gave one part of the message. The people went back to the king, gave one part of the message. Satan with Eve gave good message, but one was one part of it was wrong. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thy ears, and the ears of all the people. The prophet that had been before me, before thee of old, prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. The prophet which prophesied of peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall that prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. And that comes out of the law, Deuteronomy 18.22. He's going to lay the foundation and say, Hananiah, you're a false prophet. Why? Wait a minute. Doesn't the vessels come back under Ezra? Don't the people come back under Ezra and Nehemiah? But it wasn't two years. You can have two thirds of your message completely right and have one third be wrong, and you are a false prophet. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from, from the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. Oh, he had a great attitude. Because Jeremiah takes that yoke of wood and breaks it. And Hananiah said in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, you liar. Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations. Within the space of two full years, the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Jeremiah is yokeless. He turns away and walks away from the guy. He doesn't punch him, doesn't get a lawyer, just... All right, we'll see in two years who's right and who's wrong. Imagine what was going on in two years. Why did everybody, I thought here and I said it was going to be two years, and here we still are. Third year, the fourth year. Then the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. After the hand and I the prophet had broken the yoke from off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go tell Hananiah, uh, Jeremiah, yeah, Lord, turn around, get, your, get back there. All right. Thus saith the Lord. Now, this is one thing I could never understand of God. Here is one troublemaker. Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. God is going to change the, that yoke of wood unto iron. He's going to make it harder because of this one, imbe this one imbecile, this one idiot, this one rebellious guy. God is going to make it more. You know, there are some times that one person in your life can make much hardship. And God is the author of it. It may be a boss. It may be a child. It may be a neighbor. It may be... I don't know who, but here in chapter 28, Hananiah is that idiot that makes things worse. I don't like that about God. But who am I? There are times in your life that you may suffer things because of somebody else. God may put something in your life for someone else's benefit. I don't like that. God may give you pain for someone else's benefit. To be beneficial for them, God may do something in your life that you don't like. I don't like that. But then again, what I like, who cares? I'm not holy and I'm not almighty. I'm not righteous. It doesn't matter what I like. That's a proven fact. One man, the Bible says, a fly in an ointment caused hypocrisy to stink. One man can, can make your life miserable. One man can make it unbearable. You can, your misery, your troubles in your life could be a blessing for somebody else. That's life. Why am I suffering? Well, it may be suffering because of yourself. 
You may be suffering because of God trying to chastise you. You may be suffering because Satan wants to get you. You may be suffering because of somebody else. Somebody may be going something in their life saying, oh, well, well, and God's saying, well, what about that person over there? What, what are they doing? You see them sticking it out. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these things. We read in chapter 27 a yoke of wood, and we named the nations in 27 last night. Because of Hananiah, it now it has become a yoke of iron. Upon the neck of all these nations, and they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. That says, may serve. We've been reading, God says, go to Babylon or die. Go to Babylon or die by sword. Go, by, go to Babylon or get famine. Go to Babylon or you're going to suffer. Why does God say, oh, may? God ordered them to go. You know why God said may, the Holy Spirit? Because it's a free will. You may go. I advise you to go, but you may. See, God never, when he commands you, he never forces you. He'll give you a command. Ye must be born again, but then again, it's, it's your free will to choose. But it's a must. You must go to Babylon to live, but if you don't want to, stay. Didn't we read last night, why will you die? He's already given Jeremiah to give us a commandment. I will offer you life, and I will offer you death. Life if you go with Babylon, death if you stay in the land. But you may serve Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. It's your free will choice. Why did God allow me to get involved in this sin? Yeah, I know it's wrong. The Bible says it's wrong. Because God said you may. God told you not to, but you had the free will to choose. God is not going to stop you. Now, he may put roadblocks up. He may put uh, uh, stumbling stones to, to prevent you, but it is your free choice. And they shall serve him. And I will give him the beast of the field also. So, like I said already, the animals suffer. As long with men. Those animals are supposed to be given to God. They're supposed to be beasts of burdens for the Jews, for the for the plowing the fields, for cleaning the land, for milk, for cheese, for clothing. They're not gonna be for you no more. They're gonna be for Babylon. Then said the prophet Jeremiah to Hananiah, he turns to Hananiah now. He's been preaching to the people. Then said the prophet Jeremiah to Hananiah, the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent thee. Ooh, can you imagine before the preach that this guy, he's putting him down, he's naming him, he's pointing the finger in his face. God did not send you. Can you imagine somebody walking up to any of these TV and radio preachers, these glass pulpits, Walk up to you and say, God did not send you. They would get their legal staff and sue you right off. Even though the Bible says in Corinthians, you're not to take a brother in the Lord to court. I had a guy, I had a, I had a preacher threatening me to court. He's going to sue me. Because I opened up my mouth about him. And tape a quarter and everything. And I told him. With the tape recorder on. Doesn't the Bible say you're not supposed to take me to court? So I guess you're some kind of preacher. Because I name, and exactly the thing is, what happens, what, it, it, it's the truth. Then later on, I found out in the state of Florida, your, your, your tape and that was illegal. You have been charged with a felony. Named it. Named the sin. Oh, I'm going to take those yoke and break it. The Lord has not sent thee. But thou makest this people, and you can just see him putting his hands out, this people, you know, 
You see the people's reaction? There's people. Ooh. That's us. Trust in a lie. What's the lie? What part of his three-point outline was a lie? Are they coming back at the vessels? Yes. Ezra brings them back. Nehemiah brings them back. Are they coming back as a people? Yes. They come back in Ezra. They come in Nehemiah. Was it two years? No. That one third of the message that is wrong, God says, you are a liar. So what's a white lie? What's any lie? A lie is a lie to God. You will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment for your life. Can we park on lies for a little bit? We only got two more verses. I can say a lot about a lie that we're going to be judged for. Imagine getting up on the stage and say, oh, My name is Tom, and your name is Fred. Imagine getting up in a church and proclaiming that you are Moses. Really? You want to call yourself Moses? I, had a, I was talking to a Jewish guy the other night in the prison. We were talking about Moses. Man, he said, that guy, who would ever want to step in his shoes? I know a lot of people who, for a performance, got up, I'm Moses. Was it Charlton Hesson, somebody like that? Just, I'm Moses. You're a liar. Anybody who gets up and says their name is their name and is not their name is a lie. This guy gets up with a three-point message, and one-third of that message is a lie, and God calls him a liar. You can have a great outline, preach to the people, God blessing, the message, and everything in the Bible, and get up and say, well, repent and be baptized. You're a liar. You could be witnessing to somebody out of the Bible and just say this prayer and be a liar. I'll tell you another thing that you hear lies out of the pulpit. A preacher will get up and tell a story of something that happened in his life. Ooh, ah, that's interesting. That's, oh, wow. And then you get you, you go visit another church, or you get a, a, a preacher comes in, or you get a cassette tape or a CD, and you're listening to the message. And the preacher gets up and says, "Oh, this story happened. Wait a minute, that story happened to that preacher." And you get to go with messages as much as I've heard messages, and you hear a third preacher have the same exact. Wait a minute, that's a lie. If, if something has happened has not happened to you. And you say it's happened to you, and you use it for an illustration that it's happened in your life, and it didn't. That's a lie. You are a lying prophet. Why don't you just get up and say, I heard this illustration from this preacher. I don't know where it comes from, but let me illustrate this. Don't you get up and say it happened to you, and it didn't. And get all eyes upon you. And there are preacher stories like that out there. They'll use it over and over and over and put their own name in, fill in the blank. That's a lie. I'll tell you another lie that preacher will say. We're talking about a false prophet. So let me get you prepared for a false prophet. All eyes closed and all heads bowed. What, what, what? Raise your hand and I'll pray for you. I see that hand. And no hand was raised. See, how do you know that? What do you guess? How do you think I know that? I didn't close my eyes. And there was no hand that raised. I know what you're doing. You're trying to say, oh, I see that hand. And then other people say, oh, okay, I'll raise my hand. That's a lie. I'll tell you another lie a Christian will, will say. I'll pray for you. An hour later, you completely forgot what anything would have to do with that person talk to you about prayer.
You got a problem with prayer? Get a prayer book. Write the names in your Bible. Put them on little sticky notes in the car. This person having surgery this week. Put it around your horn. So every time you chew at the person, he's not going to move at the red light you know, or move at the green light. You, okay, I'm going to pray for this guy while I tell this guy to move it. There's so many lies out there that we do as Christians. And we'll be judged for them. Don't think, oh, you know, God will forgive us because, no, 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 no. Jesus Christ told never one lie at all in his entire life. Let's move on. Talk about lying prophets. Give me some lies that, you know. Therefore, thus saith the Lord. Now, this is God speaking to Jeremiah. Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth. This year thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against. Wouldn't that. Now, come on, let's just think for it. Wouldn't that be great? If you got a man in a pulpit that teaches lies and God says this year you're going to die, well, that would that would weed out, wouldn't it? That would clean up the church age, wouldn't it? If God said this year, within a year, the prophet gets up and speaks lies, he's going to die within 365 days. That would really, but there wouldn't be any radio time anymore. There wouldn't be any TV evangelists. There would be no healing messages or meaning. They'd be dead. You say, well, why does God allow them to live? Because that's exactly what the people want. God will give you what you want. This guy is not even going to live to see the two full years. Not happen. He's going to die within a year. He said two full years. Because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. I think if you lie from the pulpit, I think you die spiritually out of that pulpit. I think maybe God will give you time to, to get... Now listen, there are times you mess up when you shouldn't. There are times when, when, you, when you misquote. There are times when you, know, you say something stupid and shouldn't have been said. But when you purposely outright lie and say that God said something that he didn't, that you are speaking for God and God ain't speaking to you, I think there's a little time that God will deal with your heart, then that's it. Your ministry, your spirituality is dead. And you're only going to get dead corpses in your church. Listen, these TV and these radio preachers and these healers, they're dead people. They make God sick. They're dead Christians, if not Christians at all. And they're not Christians at all. The Bible says they're already in condemnation. You know, perish. Who shall believe on the Lord Jesus Christ shall not perish. You can take milk out of the refrigerator that is perished, that's old, that's new. And put it on the counter and say, the next person who goes outside, take it out to the garbage can. Just because it's sitting on the counter, it's still perished. It's still gone. It's no good no more. Even though it's on the counter. And the long-suffering of God is still, you haven't had a physical death that maybe God, listen, get right. Repent. Isn't that what the whole theme of Jeremiah is? 28 chapters? They have outright sinned against God. They have got all kinds of churches on every street. They got all kinds of images. They have got the images and the, and the false worship in the temple of God. Wait till we get to Ezekiel and see what's going on. And God does not drop them dead right away. He's giving them time after time after time. He's giving them to Jeremiah. Jeremiah is about had it. Jeremiah has been beaten. He's been slapped. He's been put into prison. He's going to go back in prison again. He has no convert. He's all by himself. He's got everybody against him. His whole hometown wants him dead. His family wants him to quit. And God says, not yet, not yet, not yet. I am still going to give him room to repent. And so Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. Now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
The guy dies, right? That year, he dies. It said in chapter 1, the fifth month. He dies within two months. He broke the wooden yoke, right? God says, I'm going to give you a yoke of iron, right? Hananiah dies two months after this. Hananiah never sees the yoke of iron. You know that? All these nations in chapter 27 that we read under the under the yoke of wood are now going to get a yoke of iron, and the guy who caused it drops dead. Why is it? I know why. Because Jeremiah's been preaching for 28 chapters. And Jeremiah never once called fire down from heaven. He never called, you know, for the waters to part. He never stopped any storms. He just walked in Jerusalem. He walked in the gates. He was a street preacher and say, Repent! Babylon's coming. God is angry with you. You've got all kinds of these false religions. You've got all this kind of false uh, uh, worship and service to an unknown God. You are not worshiping the God of your fathers. Get right. Guy walks in and says, Oh, yeah, two years, this is going to be finished, going to be peaceful. Ah, oh, this is he so good. That guy sure don't preach like that, Jeremiah. Jeremiah is so cruel, so angry. But Hananiah, he's just so friendly. How did they react when Jeremiah pointed and said, Listen, you have caused these people to, to trust in lies. How did they react? I'll tell you one way they didn't read back. They did not repent. I like that one. Nowhere does it say they got right. And their prophet, their priest, died. Jeremiah told them that this sign is going to be that this man is going to die within a year. He dies within two months, I guess by chapter 1. Uh, chapter Verse 1 of chapter 28. And assuming that he dies in the seventh month, verse 17, he dies within two months. Jeremiah said he was going to die. That would be a likely sign from God. How would Jeremiah know he was going to die? And not one person yet repent. They may have gotten angry at Jeremiah. You killed our prophet. You meanie. You big meanie. We were hoping for the two years. That's the influence that these false prophets have on the people. They've got all the followers. They've got the big numbers. They've got the, the money for the TV stations. They've got the money. They're mega. But they're mega wrong. I'm sorry what a false prophet can do. And yet, Jesus warns us over and over and over and over. And Paul tells us over and over, beware of the wolves. Jesus said they'll even come in sheep's clothing. Here you are, chapter 28. This guy comes in sheep's clothing, and he's a wolf. And no one gets right. We are in a state in America where Jeremiah is. It's getting worse. Don't be surprised that the people don't repent. Some will. Many won't. That's a Bible promise.